The industry's most popular large screen smartphone is back and better than ever. But is it better enough to call your own? Today we're getting into my full review of Samsung's Galaxy Note 4 and we'll find out if this phablet king can hold the throne. Hey what's up everyone, this is Dom and just prior to the Galaxy Note 4's release, we had the Galaxy Alpha. This was Samsung's first attempt at a metal frame smartphone and gave me an optimistic view of the future of its mobile devices. So as you can imagine, when the Galaxy Note 4 was announced, my optimism grew tenfold. Samsung is building things better, there's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that the plastic found on the Galaxy Note 3 is bad, but there's definitely nothing wrong with a little metal here and there. This device is a mix of past and present. While we still have a metal frame supporting the Galaxy Note 4, there's also a bit of plastic in form of its back cover to hide the removable battery, micro SIM, and micro SD card slot. The back cover still has familiar characteristics like the fake leather texture, but at least Samsung has given up on the artificial stitching that was found on the Note 3. This build quality makes a huge difference in your hands, but there's much more than a metal frame that makes the Galaxy Note 4 a win for Samsung. First up, we have a gorgeous 5.7 inch QHD display. This pixel packed beauty has a resolution of 2560 by 1440, coming in at 515 pixels per inch. I was initially a huge fan of the QHD display on the LG G3, but the Galaxy Note 4 takes it one step further with Super AMOLED technology. The display is crisp and vivid. It's one of those things that cannot be unseen. The problem is QHD doesn't matter a lot in the grand scheme of things. It's just one of those luxuries that's available but not yet mainstream from an app development and design perspective. Aside from the improved build quality and 5.7 inch QHD display, the Galaxy Note 4 is shipping with top of the line specifications including a quad core Snapdragon 805 processor clocked at 2.7 gigahertz, 3 gigabytes of RAM, an Adreno 420 G GPU and a 3220 milliamp hour battery. I've been reviewing the Exynos OctaCore processor model for the past couple of weeks, but even with that, everything is buttery smooth. Samsung has also included a fingerprint sensor that's built into the Galaxy Note 4's home button. It seems to be a bit improved over the sensor found on the Galaxy S5, but it's nothing I've ever cared to use. Along with that, we also have a heart rate sensor located on the back next to the LED flash and beneath its 16 megapixel camera. Up to this point, I've almost pointed out everything that makes the Galaxy Note 4 better than its predecessor. There are software and S Pen enhancements, but the exterior quality and internal specifications may be enough change for some people. One of the main reasons people purchase a Galaxy Note is because of its S Pen functionality. This wouldn't be a Galaxy Note without the S Pen. Samsung has doubled the S Pen's sensitivity, which will be helpful for those looking for improved accuracy. Along with that, the Air Command menu has been simplified and a couple of new options have been added. Samsung has ditched the S Finder and Pen Window options in the Air Command menu and reconfigured it to include Action Memo, Screen Write, Smart Select, and Image Clip. Out of these four options, I really only found two of them to be useful. Smart Select and Action Memo are the only two I ever found myself using on a regular basis. In fact, I hardly ever used Image Clip or Screen Write. In my opinion, Image Clip and Smart Select could be combined into one feature as they perform similar functions with the S Pen, but that would leave the Air Command menu a little empty. Most of the time, I didn't find it to be quick or efficient to use the default Air Command options with the S Pen. Instead, I often found the little things the S Pen does to be be more useful. Selecting multiple items or text, hovering over the interface elements to uncover details, and turning my sloppy handwriting into usable information quickly made it to the top of my S Pen usage list. Samsung has expanded multi-window functionality to include pop-up app windows that can be ran simultaneously. These resizable windows can be minimized into little floating circles and pushed out of the way until they are needed again. I found myself using this feature quite often actually. Multi-window still features features the traditional split screen view and you can go back and forth between the two modes, but overall I did find multi windows new features to be very helpful. I know a lot of people cringe at the sight of Samsung's Android overlay TouchWiz, but it's not all that bad. Things have been improving all around and it has become relatively responsive. Most everything is smooth, but don't get me wrong, you'll run into some lag here and there. 
Just like every other smartphone, the Galaxy Note 4 is not perfect. That being said, it is incredibly snappy most of the time. TouchWiz has been redesigned to feature a modern look and feel, and I'm a big fan of it. I think Samsung is refining TouchWiz in the right areas, but I'd like to see a little more simplicity in future releases. TouchWiz may have earned a bad reputation in the past, but in my opinion, it's far more exciting than stock Android. I've mentioned this in previous Galaxy Note 4 coverage, but this camera is pretty incredible. The 16 megapixel sensor with optical image stabilization is nearly second to none. Pictures in acceptable lighting are absolutely beautiful. I'll be sure to leave links to all of my photos taken with the Galaxy Note 4 below in case you'd like to check them out. The low light performance does get a little rough at times, but overall this camera is a win for Samsung. For video, the Galaxy Note 4's camera can shoot up to UHD quality with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. I've put together a beautiful cinematic camera test using the Galaxy Note 4 and I'll leave that link below as well, but as you can see, this camera does not mess around. Speaking of mess, again, I find myself wanting a simplified interface in almost every area. It's nice to have camera options, but surely it could be organized a little better. It's not all bad, but still feels a bit clunky in certain areas when compared to other smartphone cameras. Either way, thumbs up to Samsung for the image quality here. The 3.7 megapixel front facing camera on the Note 4 is also a great improvement. Images from the Note 4's front camera aren't going to be the best, but much better than its predecessor. Samsung also allows you to use the heart rate sensor on the back as a shutter button, and we also have a new wide selfie mode that will take 120 20 degree panoramic photos with a slight rotation of the device. So what about battery life? Well, the Note lineup is known for impressive on-screen times and power management, and there's no difference here. As mentioned before, I've been testing out the Exynos OctaCore Galaxy Note 4. This is an internationally unlocked model, so your battery life may be different than mine. With that said, I was still able to get as much as five to six and a half hours of on-screen time. If you do find yourself running out of battery quickly, Samsung has included an adaptive fast charging brick, which will allow you to charge up its battery from 0% to 50% in a about 30 minutes. I'll be sure to update my written review, which you can check out using the link down below when I've had enough time with the US carrier version of the Galaxy Note 4. There's no denying that this is one of Samsung's best smartphones to date. Of course, we expect innovation over iteration, but I believe that Samsung has hit the nail on the head with the Galaxy Note 4. Overall, it's a solid smartphone. The Galaxy Note 4 will provide you with most everything that was great about the Galaxy Note 3, but much needed improvements where it counts. For a full comparison between the to, be sure to check out my ultimate comparison video linked below. Nothing is perfect, but Samsung has done the right things in the right places with the Galaxy Note 4, and I think that you'll enjoy it. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe for more review videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This is Dom, and have a great day.